Hey, what's up? How's it going? 1 to 99 Magic Guide. Let's get into it. I have a whole bunch of great training methods, all the way from, you know, one of course, free to play, and some amazing members money making methods later on in the video, so make sure you guys check it out. I've also included a whole bunch of gear setups and uh, all the bonuses, all that stuff that's found in 2018 because a lot of the other guides out there are very outdated and also guys I'm doing a huge giveaway with every single 99 in this video I'm going to be giving away eternal boots with 15,000 blood runes and yeah make sure you guys throw a like, subscribe if you haven't and leave your RSN I do hope you guys enjoy the video, let's get into it so moving on to every single rune, not including non-combination runes, I'm just gonna let you look at the chart because I've commentated this a few times and I sound like an idiot just, you know, reading off everything. Um, the only thing I do want to mention, I guess, is the Wrath rune at the very end, which just came into the game. It takes 95 magic to actually use it for the surge spells. Actually, I guess it's only 81 for air surge and 95 for fire. If you haven't checked out my fire surge against PVM bosses, check it out. I was hitting so high, like 50s and whatnot on Bandos. I would also like to note that the soul rune is really good. It's mainly used for, uh, what is it, stun alking. You could also use these runes with the ancient spellbook and cast blood barrage to heal yourself, which is really efficient for PVMing, especially solo. And if we take a look at the regular spellbook fully unlocked, it looks so badass and like colorful. There is a few things missing like the Sarodaman strike and Zami strike and uh, the bounty teleport at the very bottom. But yeah, besides that, it's completely full. It looks so juicy. There is, I guess, a Slayer Dart as well. The Lunar Spellbook holds a wide variety of money-making types and training methods, which I will be covering later. I legit have like 10 towards the end, and I think most of you guys are gonna be very surprised to see how good it actually is. And lastly, looking at the Ancient Spellbook, which you actually need to do Desert Treasure to complete. And you unlock so much spells that are really good for PvP, um, like Ice Barrage, Ice Blitz, which actually frees your opponents. And then you have the Blood Barrage, which is good for PKing as well, but no one really uses it. It's really good for PVMing like uh, certain bosses to save yourself HP, especially like Dagonoth or Rex, etc. It also comes with a few other spells that poison and teleports, but nothing too valuable. And if we take a look at the six combination runes, we got Mist, Dust, Mud, Smoke, Steam, and Lava. You can look over this, some of these are very valuable and useful for certain bosses and skilling like rune crafting. The Mud Rune for example, it's Water and Earth, which is really good for snaring other opponents while PvPing. And then uh, yeah, there's just so many Steam runes, really good for Lunar Spellbook and uh, Humidifying. And if we take a look at the void, it recently got changed. It's actually 45% to accuracy. I actually had to wiki it because I didn't believe it for myself. And uh, yeah, it's 2.5% damage if you have the elite version as well. You could also wear infinity or third age, but it's really not the best. It's kind of more for stunting and barrows is much better. And of course, ancestral. So if we move on to the right column, starting at the series ring, if you actually imbue this with a Nimer zone, it'll be plus 12 magic, normally just being 6. And if we look down at the tormented bracelet, it's roughly 12 mil in the GE. An item to note is the Tomb of Fire, which gives 50% more damage to any fire spell. That's literally insane. So if you're training on the normal spell book, you're always going to want to have this equipped in your uh, shield, uh, you know, book, book slot. Now if we look all the way to the bottom, we got the occult neck for 10% magic damage and the actual uh, imbued Sarah cape or you know Zami Guthix cape which gives 2% magic damage. The skill cape actually allows you to change your spellbook 5 times per day. Extremely useful and it's really annoying going to like other people's houses or maybe buying the pharaoh scepter which is 5 mil to teleport all the way out to change your spellbook on ancients. As far as weapons go, the best wand is the Kodai wand, which is like 110 mil. It actually is 15% magic damage, and I believe it has a 1 out of 10 chance to save your ruins of the cast. There is some other notable weapons as well, starting off at the bottom, the Trident of Seas. You cannot use it on other players, but it's like the same speed as like a magic shortbow. It's really good, hits constant 30s, 25s. And you can actually charge the trident with runes, you don't have to have them in your inventory. Another weapon is a Staff of the Dead, which you can actually attach a Toxic Fang to from Zolra. The Aram Staff right below was also just made one-handed, and it's 5% magic damage, best weapon to use for PKing. I 
I know I just rambled really hard, so I actually left the bonuses on the screen so you guys can clearly see what's going on. And if you guys have any questions that you want me to answer, feel free to leave them below as well. I'll try to do my best to help you guys out. A few items I didn't include is actually the Wizard's Mind Bomb, which you can buy from Falador for 3 coins. It's actually going to boost your magic level 3. You could ALK at 52 with this. You could also use a Magic Pot. There's an Imbued Heart as well, which raises your magic level by 8, and it's going to actually help for your defense as well. If you guys don't know, the amount of damage you take based on a magic creature, like if a major was hitting you and you had 20 magic, it's going to be a lot worse than if you had 90 magic, because your defense is based on your magic level yeah another item is the imbued heart which raises your magic level by eight you can get them from superior slayer monsters and uh yeah they're about 20 mil in the ge pretty expensive and all of my skilling guides i've included a list of all the quests you should do because it's going to boost you from like level one to 30 and you're going to skip all of the slow tedious training methods Pick which route you want to do to get 13 magic, you could airstrike goblins, you could basically do anything, but once you get 13 you'll unlock splashing, and some people actually do this all the way till 99. You can AFK for about 5 minutes on end, and I would not suggest it, but some people do like 6 hour auto click sessions, where they just you know put the auto clicker on the ruin or something in their inventory, and uh, yeah that's a lot of XP while you're sleeping. If you do Fire Strike, it'll be 14k XP per hour. It'll cost you 4 mil and take you 850 hours. Now, Firebolt is almost double the XP at 28k, but it's gonna cost you 50 mil and take you 450 hours roughly. Fire Blast is 42k XP an hour, costing you 85 mil, 285 hours, and then Fire Wave 52k, 75 mil, 230 hours. You could even do Fire Surge with the new wrath runes, but let's be honest, that costs too much. I would highly recommend AFK splashing all the way till 45 magic, but of course you could just teleport to Varrock, or Fally, or Lumbridge. At level 45 to 55, you're gonna be wanting to teleport to Kami for 80k XP an hour. It's gonna take you 1.9k laws, but you could actually do it earlier if you use that wizard mind bomb I talked about. Now at level 55, you could do this all the way till 99, and these are some pretty good methods. So most people just sit there and all get like the GE. Guys, don't do that. Such a waste of your time. What you really want to be doing is training combat. You could just keep piety on or, you know, 15% strength or don't even use prayer, but actually alk in between like the swings of the scimitar and whatnot. You could actually alk in between the Camelot teleports and an Artie teleport for 130k XP an hour and 150k. Without trying to brag, I used this method to be the third person to barrage in one of the deadman modes and I actually got rank 1 strength. You guys just gotta keep at it, keep grinding, stay consistent. At level 66, you could charge air orbs for some gold. It's 38k XP an hour and it's roughly 800 to 1k profit per orb and you could be doing about 500 an hour, which is 500k gold an hour. So I do have over 5 money making methods regarding magic later on in the video, but I do want to cover the quickest, most efficient, costly method right now. So it's actually going to be bursting in the catacombs. You could do it at like Monkey Madness 2 spot or anything like that, but this actually is the most gold if you kill like Necreals and you know things like that, where they drop a whole bunch of ruin items, etc. As far as the gear that you use, honestly just go with the best that you can. I would recommend, you know, monk's robes, maybe a, a mitri or mitri, however you say that, if you don't have like a slayer helmet, if you're not on task. And uh, yeah, definitely like a book of darkness, definitely bring in a cult neck, but check out the examine. Very sketchy, man. I, I don't even wear these anymore, just because I get sketched out. You might want to use your in-game world map, because it's kind of hard to navigate through the catacombs, it's very large. At level 70, you're going to want to start bursting. This is one of the best methods all the way to 99. It's roughly 100k to 150k mage XP an hour, depending, you know, how big your clumps are, how efficient you are, and your magic damage, etc. You could be looking at 300k plus an hour, depending on what you kill, like, you know, dust devils or just whatever, because if you train on a monster that doesn't have any drops, you're going to be losing probably 500k gold an hour, so definitely pick what you kill wisely. If you are doing Slayer, you could expect about 60 to 70k Slayer XP per hour. 
So next up is stun alking. You actually want to cast alchemy and then do the stun and then alchemy in between, you know, back and forth. And another method which most people will not do, but it is possible. 256k XP an hour. You actually want to stun alk the arty guards and then teleport to arty and then like redo it. And then once everyone's stunned, it lasts five minutes. So then you would go to Fally and there's about 10 guards there and repeat. It'd be extremely click intensive, but people do do it and it is possible. Alright, so moving on to some killer training and money making methods, all found on the Lunar Spellbook. They added a whole bunch of new spells like a couple months ago or maybe even a year. And I'll be showing you guys a few which are very good. Before we do begin, I actually want to touch upon the NPC Contact spell. It's only level 67. This isn't a money making method or, you know, a training method, but you can um, actually contact all of these NPCs. Really good for runecrafting and slayer training and other various quests. So at 65, you unlock the Bake Pie spell. It's 82k XP an hour and 300k cooking XP an hour and can be very profitable. I think you do actually need the corresponding cooking level and you do want to research which pies are actually the best profit. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a good one. At level 76, you unlock Spin Flax, which is 77k XP per hour, plus 77 crafting XP, about 60k profit per hour, which is, you know, Flax just isn't much anymore, which is a good thing, because the bowstrings are still decent, but yeah, you can make 5k bowstrings an hour, really good for Iron Men. Level 77, you can actually do glass make. It's 45k XP an hour, plus 75 crafting XP, about 400k profit. And you can make 10k glass per hour. Definitely not as good as the other methods, but still decent, you know, especially if you're an Iron Man. At level 78, you can actually do the Tan Leather spell, 120k XP an hour, an amazing money maker, especially with the Wildy Elite Diaries. You can actually kill green dragons, and you get noted bones, and then you just get the green dragon hide, turn it in the leathers, you bring a needle, turn it in the bodies, and then alk it and keep the gold stack. But if you get PK'd, good fight. At level 80, you unlock the String Jewelry spell, absolutely amazing, I feel so bad. So bad for all the noobs just sitting there at the GE Alkin. They're like 85 magic. They could have been doing this. They might have even unlocked the quest. They just never watched any guides or, you know, research more. But yeah, this is 150k XP an hour plus 6.2k crafting XP. And it's basically the same cost per hour as alchemy. It's, it's just twice as good. I would totally go with this route. On one of my peer accounts, I actually got 85 to 94 magic just off this method. Another spell that's definitely not a money maker, but it's kind of a, a quality of life little uh, hack you could do on your farm runs, and it's fertile soil. You don't actually have to bring super compost, which saves you a lot of inventory. You get magic XP, but it is more expensive. At level 86, you can actually do plank make. It's 166k XP an hour. That's amazing, and it's amazing money maker as well. It depends on what plank you use, of course. I think mahogany is the best because it's like the highest tier, but um, the other one should be good as well. There isn't any more money making methods I can think about, but at 94, you actually unlock barrage, and uh, it's a 300k magic XP an hour, and additionally 200k defense and HP combined. It's negative 2 mil an hour, it could be a little bit less, especially if you do use the code I want, which will save you cast like I talked about earlier. You could kill these in the Monkey Madness Tunnel, but I'd probably recommend going to the Catacombs like I showed earlier. You do get totem pieces and uh, there's lots of Slayer monsters which drop a lot of gold. And yeah, once you get 94, you can actually Venge PK, but one of my favorites is Barrage PK, like hybriding Deep Wilderness. Never know what you're going to find, it's so much fun. And there it is, the 99 Magic Guide. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it found it informative, you know, learned some tips. I put a good amount of effort into this and uh, yeah, it's not too hard. Nowadays magic, you can, you know, you can make a lot of profit. Back in the days, it was always a costly skill, but with the Lunars and, you know, all the new, um, <clears throat> all the new money making methods with like plank make and all that stuff, it's really good. And also guys, feel free to check out Sears Village, number one RuneScape merch site. And you know, who doesn't need a RuneScape pillow? 
and uh, you know some mugs and all that stuff but seriously if you have the time check it out I'm gonna be uploading a whole bunch of really cool artwork on there done by Volkaban an amazing artist made all the Sir Puggers um, you know pictures and all that stuff it's gonna be really cool so check it out if you do want to support the channel have a good one guys see ya Drinking old English rags tied, hang the side of us on my head.